Yo, what is up, everybody? It's Jethro Green. Welcome back to another Naruto reaction video here today. And today we got yet another dissection video by the great Swag Kage. And as you can tell by the title, it is Dissa Dissecting Sasuke Uchiha. Now, Sasuke Uchiha, to me, besides being the strongest Uchiha that's ever lived when we take into account Boruto, is one of the most conflicted characters throughout the storyline, you know, with all his twists and turns uh, that we see throughout that the anime. Um, he's a very complex character. And a very relatable character, I might add. But um, so we're gonna see Swat Kage break it down, and I can't wait to see it. But before we begin, if you enjoy, you know, any that's greatly appreciated, hit that like button, turn on the bell notification to stay up to date with videos truly. And if you're new and you enjoy, and if this is your first time here and you mess with the kid, you know, of course, hit that sub button, man. Can want you to do you're part of the family forever, and it is growing, and I love you all for that. But let's get straight to it, screen. Let's see what Swag has to say about this character. Oh boy, Sasuke Uchiha. If the comments on my last video talking about him didn't indicate this already for you, he's quite a controversial character to say the very least. The Makes sense. Makes sense. The come to a consensus about him, with one chunk of it hating him, one chunk of it worshipping him, and the other chunk not really caring either way. Now, I'll do my best to keep personal yeah. biases out of this video, since as many of you know, I do really like Sasuke as a character, but that might be a little easier said than done in a video of this. Of story. course. I will say right off the bat that I do think Sasuke is incredibly complex, and while that's only based on my own interpretations of his actions and words. I do think that at some point anyway, Kishimoto did intend for Sasuke to be one of the most grounded, human, and three-dimensional characters that the series had to offer. Now, I can totally see why many people view Sasuke as a flat, jerk-ass Gary Stu who puts no thought into his actions and acts unreasonably and completely haphazardly, but at the same time, I wholeheartedly disagree with the idea, and I think that the people who do see him like this don't really understand his motivations or the way he thinks. Anyway, enough opinion. Let's get into the actual meat of this video and start breaking Sasuke down. The best place I can think to start with is Sasuke's relationship with his brother Itachi and how this relationship affected his motivations throughout the series. At the beginning of the story, Sasuke's one and only goal was to kill Itachi and that was that. It was such a major part of his character that we are introduced to him with this in mind. Now he doesn't specify who he's talking about when he tells Kakashi and the rest of Team 7 that he has a goal that involves killing right. somebody, but it's very obvious that he's talking about Itachi here. Now understanding how this motivation affects the rest of his character is key to getting a grasp on who Sasuke is as a person. While it's very easy to view his grudge against Itachi as a very generic revenge subplot, it's certainly a whole lot deeper than that, as the Uchiha clan massacre has a whole lot of implied secondary psychological effects on Sasuke throughout the series. It's shown to the audience through flashbacks that Sasuke was always a pretty quiet and nervous kid before his clan had been wiped out, so losing everyone he'd ever cared about turned him into a full-blown introvert. On top of that, the annihilation of his clan created more than just a personal hatred towards his older brother, as we can see through subtle bits of exposition that Sasuke doesn't just hate Itachi, he hates everything that Itachi stands for. There are many points in part right. one alone where Sasuke chooses not to do something solely because he sees it as something his brother would have done. What's not outright stated in all of these cases, it's a very feasible explanation for most of them. When Sasuke shielded Naruto from Haku's needles, for example, he even says himself he has absolutely no idea why he did it, but it's pretty likely that he did this because he thinks it would be too much like Itachi Itachi to just let a comrade die right in front of him. After he breaks Zaku's arms using the power of the curse mark in the Forest of Death, we see that Sasuke is genuinely afraid of himself, as after realizing that he acted in such a barbaric and heartless manner, he probably instinctively compared himself to his brother. He tells Naruto during the battle against Gara that he's not willing to watch any more of his comrades die in front of him, and prepares to continue fighting Gara in what is essentially a suicide mission, all because he thinks the act of running away to preserve his own life when he could be saving the lives of his comrades is too much of an Itachi-like thing to do, and he refuses to kill Naruto to gain the Mangekyo Sharingan solely because that's what his brother asked him to do. Sasuke views right. doing this as yes. a way of validating the way his brother gained power, and refuses to do it for this reason alone. Even by the end of part one, it's made abundantly clear that Sasuke has created his own set of morals, and that he is vehemently opposed to doing anything he thinks his brother might do. Not because of his own personal hatred towards Itachi, but because he views him as the sole representation of everything that is wrong with the world. He sees Itachi as pure evil, and for good reason, as at this point, Itachi Definitely. had made himself out to be an egomaniacal psychopath, a pure evil man with no pride or principles, who was concerned with no one other than himself. I think killing Itachi meant more than just getting revenge to Sasuke, as he felt almost morally obligated to kill his brother for the sake of making the world a better place. This is why at the beginning of Shippuden, he seems like a completely different person than he is at its halfway point. As in part one, there are many instances in Shippuden where Sasuke is clearly shown acting in a way that he believes his
his brother with knives. As with the exception of during his encounter with Team 7, Sasuke makes it very clear that he doesn't believe in killing people or forcing them to do anything he asks them to. When he recruits the members of Hebi, for example, he doesn't force any of them to join him, and instead only takes them along with him if they agree to come. He also makes it a point not to kill anyone in his conquest to find Itachi, unless A, he sees them as just as bad as Itachi was in the first place, yep. like with Orochimaru, or B, it's in self-defense, like with Deidara. There are also many small details throughout the series that support the idea that this is a moral conquest for Sasuke, and not a selfish fulfillment of revenge. He doesn't allow Sakura to come with him on his quest to kill Itachi because he believes it'd be too dangerous for her. He kills Orochimaru and expresses his disgust with him because of how similar he and Itachi are, and he expresses to various characters throughout the series who quell him from his quest for revenge that they don't understand what he's trying to do. And he outright refuses to allow anybody else to kill Itachi solely yeah. because very close-minded like character, I might add. Shouldering what he believes to be his own moral burden. I definitely believe his interactions with Orochimaru are the best pieces of evidence here for this being a moral crusade as opposed to self-fulfillment. Initially, he was willing to let Orochimaru take his body if that meant he was able to kill Itachi. Yep, that is correct. Which proved that he was willing to go to incredible lengths to ensure that Itachi was killed. But after spending so much time with Orochimaru, he learns that Orochimaru is no better than Itachi was, and that by giving him access to an Uchiha's body, he would just be gracing the world with a problem just as bad as Itachi was. Right. He doesn't even kill Orochimaru out of self-defense, but because he believes it's just the right thing to do. He doesn't outright say many of these things because, as I've said before, the annihilation of his clan turned him into an introvert, so he doesn't feel the need to explain himself for the sake of the validation of others. On top of that, he even explains to Naruto that he doesn't think he, and by extension most people, would understand since they don't know what Sasuke knows. Sasuke's introversion also made his resolve to kill Itachi that much stronger, as by breaking any emotional ties that he had with other people, he was able to make the goal of killing all right Itachi so halfway through this i don't want to pause this too many times because it's a shorter one but to add on so far what i've heard from swag here sasuke his moral compass you know the the, the formation of his moral compass took place obviously with the massacre of the of the uchiha clan and um you know it traumatized him and it really left a mark on him and on his psyche as we clearly tell throughout the entire storyline um, even up to this point, even up to this day, um, you know, Itachi before prior to the massacre, Itachi was seen in a good light, obviously in a great light, actually by Sasuke. He looked up to him in the highest of regards. Um, and with him looking so, you know, admiring him so greatly, the sight of Itachi standing over his parents dead must've been very, very significant to him. Um, and just and just due to the sheer fact that he did admire him so highly, just added on to the utter, you know, traumatization that Sasuke, you know, went through seeing the massacre of the Uchiha clan, seeing his brother there, and hearing his last words before he before Itachi left the village, um, you know, seeing, well, to his eye, what Itachi really is. You know, obviously later on we find out that Itachi was kind of copying you know for the good for the wellness of sasuke but the point is in sasuke's eyes he thought he saw the true clothes of itachi that day um and that formed his mental compass you know the mental compass being a very fortified one i might add because as we as Sa swag pointed out he becomes an introvert after the massacre of the uchiha clan you know he's very introverted and thus very close-minded he doesn't like hearing anything from anybody and Naruto, you know, kind of his counterpart, if, you know, so to speak, um, is a very open, uh, a loud mouth person, you know, in a good way, obviously. Um, and Sasuke doesn't like that. Um, and that's why they get the rivalry. They're kind of like polar opposites. And Kishimoto try to, in a way, kind of, you know, have this yin yang sort of effect when you see Naruto and Sasuke interact interacting. Um, one guy, you know, is more, you know, loud. The other guy's more introverted. Uh, they're just two different people. One guy is the underdog. One guy is, you know, the shit being in Uchiha and being the, the, the brother of Itachi Uchiha was such a legend before becoming a rogue ninja, per se. Um, so Sasuke was someone that wasn't really going to be influenced at the end of the day. You know, Naruto seemed like he was le doing a number on Sasuke Psyche at the beginning of, you know, part one of Naruto, befriending him and trying his best to befriend the guy. 
Um, yes, they had the rivalry, but it was in good spirits, um, you know. But the hatred, I have to say, the hatred that he had towards Itachi outweighed the possible friendship of Naruto at the very beginning, which is the reason why he left the village. Um, and I think I might add, being with Orochimaru kind of polluted his mindset to some extent. You know, he had some, uh, not to say he could completely went, you know, turn, went left and just became pure evil. He never did that, not even at his worst. Um, but his, his mental compass was changed. Being with Orochimaru, he became even more, I believe, I don't want to. I don't know if the word is narcissistic, but you know, egotistical to some extent, similar to Itachi, um, or at least what Sasuke thought Itachi was. Um, you know, he became more of that, became more rigid, um, less caring about others around him, and kind of, I believe, you know, the rock bottom per se was when he killed Orochimaru. Um, I really think, you know, forming Taka or, you know, when he, when he had Jugo, uh, Karin, and Soigetsu kind of brought back some humanity to him, I, I must say. Because Ruchimaru was this, this pure evil. All, all Sasuke was seeing all day was this bullshit about, you know, uh, power and all this. And honestly, I think it influenced Sasuke greatly. But, you know, leaving that, killing Orochimaru, leaving Kabuto there to do whatever he wants, um, and forming Taka really, I feel like it gave him some humanity again. You know, he started to become more human. And that's a big reason why he ended up at the very, very end going back to the Leaf, you know, after the final battle. Um, kind of reuniting with uh, Naruto and thing, things like that. Always keeping his uniqueness about him, you know, always being the shadow Hokage um, the sh in the shadows. But having humanity once again. Um, so I feel like there was a lot of twists and turns with him. It's a very complex character, very relatable character, you know, because like human beings, we don't always have one mindset. We, we don't, we're not the worst, you know, our mistakes don't define us. Um, and that's something Sasuke really embodies. Um, but let's continue. Focus on. Due to the moral code he created for himself, I really don't think Sasuke thought ignoring Itachi's presence in the world was something he could do and still be in the right. Like I've said many times, I think he thought of it as a duty and felt morally obligated to kill Itachi to make the world a better place. Upholding his own morals was more important to him than anything else, which is why he prioritized killing Itachi over his own happiness, and also why at many points he prioritized the lives of others over his own. If this was a selfish conquest for revenge, Sasuke just flat out would not have risked his own life as many times as he did, and certainly not for the sake of other people. And now this is where we come to one of the most interesting character moments in the entire series, and what I personally believe to be one of the most interesting character moments in all of Shonen. Sasuke goes through an existential crisis and has an on-screen mental breakdown. This is more than just Sasuke reacting in a fit of denial. He's having a full-blown panic attack. He digs his nails into his hair, sweat begins to drip from his body like crazy, his pupils dilute, and he starts screaming screaming at Obito that everything he's saying is a flat-out lie. If there is one single scene in the entire series that lends credence to everything I've said in this video so far, it is this one right here. It is one of the best animated scenes in the entire series, and the attention I definitely agree. here is magnificent. The animators at Studio Perio took great care in ensuring that Sasuke's trauma would be communicated to the audience here, as he really begins to question who he is and what he's supposed to do with his life now. We even see him later, what must have been hours after the conversation with Obito, fully dressed and recovered, standing in a completely different location, still bawling his eyes out from the realization that Itachi was a good person. This realization causes Sasuke's character to pull a complete 180, as the previous perspective that he had on the world and everybody in it was shattered and replaced with a cynical outlook on life that made everybody seem like they couldn't be trusted. Killing people is no longer an off-the-table option for him now, since both Itachi, who he believed to be a good person now, and the Leaf Village that he used to believe was full of good people had done it on plenty of occasions, he makes the admittedly foolish leap in logic, if they can do it, why can't I? This is why he kills so many samurai at the Five Kage Summit without remorse. At this point, he believes that warning somebody he will kill them if they don't get out of his way is enough to keep him on the moral high ground, as he moves tirelessly towards his new goal of destroy the Hidden Leaf Village. Many right. people see this as a very weird haphazard jump for his character to make, and while I do sort of agree that Sasuke was acting a bit out of character during the Five Kage Summit, 
arc, it does make a whole lot of sense for him to act this way, considering, again, he's having what essentially amounts to an existential crisis. Many yep, people criticize Sasuke. That's a perfect word for it, definitely. His philosophical view on the world, but he only does this when he is presented with loads and loads of new information. See, many people seem to be under the impression that as soon as Sasuke found out that Itachi was a good person, he and Itachi began to share the same outlook on the world. This just isn't the case, as, like I said before, yeah, Sasuke I agree with that. Itachi was what he believed to be doing the world a justice. It was a very small scale goal and wasn't something that he thought would make a whole lot of a difference, but it was still something that he was in pursuit of tirelessly. When he finds out that Itachi wasn't actually the bad guy in this situation, Sasuke decides that he needs somewhere else to direct his anger. There is somebody that absolutely ruined his life, and the idea of letting whoever that was completely off the hook just doesn't sit right with him. Now, in the heat of the moment, Sasuke does struggle to figure out who it is that needs to be punished. Of course, this ends up being the Hidden Leaf Village, which he now believes to be just as evil as he originally thought Itachi was. However, as he finds out more and more information about what led to the annihilation of the Uchiha clan in the first place, the target for his anger becomes much more broad. As he learns more and more about the history of the Shinobi world, he's forced to direct his anger at more and more people at once, which is why he goes from simply hating Itachi to hating the entire Leaf Village to wanting to reform the entire Shinobi world. There's a gradual escalation in his train of thought. Itachi only killed the members of the Uchiha clan because Donzo asked him to do it, but Donzo only took Shisui's eye and ended up forcing Itachi to do this because the Leaf Village was in such a sorry state. The only reason the Leaf Village was in such a bad state is because Obito had attacked it with the Nine Tails 17 years earlier. The only reason Obito attacked the Leaf Village with the Nine Tails 17 years earlier is because of the fact that Kakashi killed Rin. The only reason Kakashi was forced to kill Rin is that and other things I might add. I might add. Place for so long, <clears throat> which is why Sasuke eventually comes to the conclusion that the entire world is in need of reform. Even after learning that Itachi was a good person, Sasuke doesn't simply decide, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll just let everything go and go back to living in Konoha because he wants to figure out what it was that caused him so much pain and at least make a little bit of a dent in the world large enough to prevent the same thing that happened to him from happening to anybody else like him. As he learns more and more about what led to the Uchiha clan massacre, the size of the dent that he needs to make seems to become larger and larger, which as a result causes his ambitions to become greater and greater. At first, the solution to this is kill Itachi, but it eventually escalates to destroy the Hidden Leaf Village and then further to I need to reform the entire Shinobi world as we know it. So hopefully this video has given you at least a little bit of insight. Yeah, it was very well done, Swag. Well done. I had a lot of fun. All right, there you guys have it. Now, to sum up my thoughts for, and kind of adding on to Swag. Um, so, yeah, when it's, uh, Sasuke learned the truth of Itachi and was enlightened with, you know, the with the truth, um, he, I think his mentality completely changed, clearly. Um, it went from hatred to, honestly, I believe the best word to describe it in, is numbness, you know, uh, numbness and rage, just pure rage. Um, maybe some sort of shame, maybe because he, he, he realized he was so blinded by hate. But the ironic thing is, once again, he's filled with, you know, bad emotions. It's rage, you know. Um, I believe... Uh, the younger Sasuke was very driven by emotion, clearly. Um, I think that's a lot of characters younger in their younger years were driven by emotion. Sakura with love, Naruto with with dedication, and Sasuke with hate. Um, you know, when he learned the truth, basically it was like the way to it, it's like a boulder just falling on you. Like everything that he worked for, everything that he lived for was a lie. You know, he was misinformed and he became numb to the point where his moral compass really wasn't there anymore. You saw the things that he did. He, when Donzo held Karin hostage, killed her, he, he ki tried to, you know, attacked her to kill Donzo without a second thought. It's just numbness, no emotion, numb. At the Five Kage Summit, numb. You know, obviously he was competent enough to not let himself get killed, um, well, admittedly, Obito did have to come and save him when the Tsuchikage was about to de-atomize him, um, to be fair. But he was very reckless, very un-Sasuke-esque, I, I might say. Someone, some might say, you know. And um, this had a pure rage. Yeah, I guess it, it did help him to some extent. He got, you know, very powerful. Um, what, he, what, is he, what, what he was able to accomplish in that state was quite impressive. 
fighting off several Kages and their right hand mans in the five Kage summit and then killing Danzo the way that he did. Despite Danzo having hacks with tons of Sharingans on his arms and the spamming, you know, these Sharingan abilities to give himself another chance at life. And Sasuke still beat him. This was pure rage and power. Um, but yeah, Sasuke was a, is a very relatable character. Um, obviously, his rock bottom was after the war when he fought. He, when he, he, after the war, you know, seeing all the trauma, all the things that he's been through personally, only had one solution that came to mind, and that was revolution. Revolution, you know, and he thought that he was the man for it, similar to Madara. So there's this kind of dichotomy here. Similar to Madara, he, he thinks the only way is revolution with him being at the pinnacle, you know, um, kind of taking away free will, not the infinite Sukuyomi, you know, not to that extent of taking away free will, but being this dictator, you know, even if he has to be hated, like he said, he wanted to keep the world in check. And that's where Kishimoto, you know, beautifully showed the, you know, the, the yin and yang between Naruto and Sasuke, another beautiful moment. Um, and Kishimoto obviously wanted to point out to the audience that taking away free will, this won't lead to true happiness. Uh, what Naruto wanted, obviously, was a way to do it through unity, you know, voluntary unity, not taking away free will, not being a dictator, not ruling with an iron fist, but uniting people. And Naruto had to beat down Sasuke, as we saw in the final valley, you know, the battle of, in the end of Shippuden. And how do that beating awaken Sasuke again? And he kind of came back, kind of calmed down. You know, he calmed down. And now we have him in Boruto. He has his, huma his humanity back. And um, he's a good man now. He's a good man. But the thing is, overall, Sasuke is a very complex character. One of the best characters on the show. Um, one of the most impactful characters on the show clearly, and um, Kishimoto really wrote this character beautifully, man. Very well done. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed my reaction to this video. Swag did a splendid job, exquisite job at uh, dissecting Sasuke Uchiha, and I tried my best to give my thoughts as well. Um, if, you have, if you guys have any recommendations, let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys just want to you know, just talk it up, my social media is in the intro and in the, in the description, but it's going to wrap it up. Man, I love you all. I want to say thank you all once again for the support. We've been growing, and I love you all for that, man. We're going to keep moving together because we're a family. But I'll catch you in the next one. It's g signing out. Peace.